Aloha and welcome to Inside Hawaii Real Estate, a community real estate talk show dedicated to providing up-to-date information news to Hawaii home buyers, sellers, and investors. I'm Will Tanaka with my co-host, business partner, and wife, Leone Lab, a realtor with over 20 years of experience in leadership roles in the Hawaii real estate industry. Thanks, Will. Will is a full-time realtor sharing his talents as a former real estate litigation attorney, law school professor, and the former head of a Hawaii title and escrow company. Together as full-time realtors, Will and I work as a team to bring you the latest in Hawaii real estate. On this show, we are going to be talking about condos. So if you own a condo, if you're thinking about selling your condo, if you're thinking about purchasing a condo, well, this show is for you. And we brought in an absolute expert to help us discuss the very real challenges in today's condo market. And also, hopefully, we're going to talk about some potential solutions. And we'd like to give a warm, the warmest welcome to Sue Savio. Thank so you for she, Yeah. Thank you for a very nice, warm welcome. I'm <laughs> pleased to be here. Welcome, well, Sue. so, yeah, no, we, we love having you here. Uh, we really appreciate your time, but you know, I want people to know about you. So you are the president and owner of Insurance Associates, Inc. You're a local girl born and raised in Hawaii. And you were also born into the real estate business where your mother was a real estate broker. And you know, a fun fact is that you started your career as a teacher and then nearly five decades ago, you transitioned to the insurance world in 1975. And I think, you know, if you're in the real estate industry, the insurance industry, Sue always just generally gives her time and expertise. So if there's any questions about condo building insurance, I mean, she is the go-to expert. And when we email you, you're so responsive. I, I don't know how you do it. So with that said, I mean, we are so excited to talk to you more about it. And welcome, Sue. Thank you welcome. for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much. And we'll just jump right in. So. You know, Sue, we have buyers um, in all price points. So we have buyers looking for condos, you know, in lower price points, like they're ent entering into the real estate market or trying to. And then we have condo buyers that are in the luxury space where they're looking to buy luxury condos. And in all cases, when they're looking at purchasing a condo and they're going to be financing it with a mortgage, you know, with a loan, um, what happens is when we get into it, they find a property they like, and then we go to their lender. Then the lender is always asking us these days, does the condo have a sublimit? Is it adequately insured? Or straight up, they'll tell us, you know, when we give them the building information, they'll say that property is on the bad list. And so we can't loan on it. And we're facing this over and over again, you know, doing our part and our poor buyers. And so I think the first thing we want to talk about is how did, how did Hawaii get to this point? Can you kind of share some insight? Yes, I can. Basically, you have to understand 2023 was a very hard year for the insurance marketplace, and it made for a very tight market come 2024. In 2023, mm -hmm. there were 28 catastrophic events in Hawaii. These events, not in Hawaii, in America, and these events caused reinsurance costs to skyrocket. And because of Lahaina, which was our catastrophic event, uh, roughly about 6.9 billion and counting, our rates skyrocketed for the first time in 30 some odd years. The last time they skyrocketed was when Iniki hit and we had huge rate increases, companies leaving, nobody wanting to write hurricane. Well, we're having companies not leaving, but cutting back on what they're willing to write. We're having companies increase, have increased rates because of the reinsurance costs and it's causing a lot of turmoil in an industry that was very simple before for the last 30 some odd years, which is now we're almost back to Iniki days where we're having very tight market, high rates, and not able to get full coverage on the complexes that we need to insure. So this has all caused the real estate market to say, and the banks to say, we can't loan on your building, you don't have 100%. Uh, realtors are having trouble selling and buying, owners are as well, you can't refinance if you're trying to send your kids through college. It's just a very sad state of affairs, but it's where we're at right now. And as a Nikki caused us this turmoil for a couple of years, I'm sure that Lahaina's fires will cause the same turmoil for a couple of years. 
You know, so you talked about reinsurance and, you know, just from, um, you, you know, I understand insurance, we all need it, but in terms of how it works with condos and what, why reinsurance is important, can you kind of get down to the basics sure. and, and why, yeah, yeah into sure. reinsurance? Okay, so reinsurance is insurance that only insurance companies buy. There are about 50 reinsurers in the world who reinsure everything that an insurance company needs to spread their risk. I uh, always say, take, for example, the Marco Polo fire. It was a $110 million fire. The insurance company was first insurance company of Hawaii. If they had that whole risk, they would have closed up their doors because it was a huge loss. But they only had $4 million of the risk because they reinsured it with about seven or eight other carriers out there who bought a piece of the action. You take the um, tower that fell in um, New York with 9-11, there were like 20 companies on that and everybody lost because nobody would have expected the whole tower to go down. But those are reinsurers buy that certain set amount of coverage. In 2024, the contracts normally come up around January to sign for the year. And the insurance companies, when they went to sign their reinsurance contracts, the prices were extremely higher because of all the catastrophes that we had. And of course, we finally got zapped here in Hawaii because Lahaina had a catastrophe. And what has happened then is the reinsurer said, yes, we'll still insure in your state, but we used to charge you only $1,000. Now we're going to charge you $5,000 per million of coverage. So it's gone sky high and it's created a problem for those of us who live in Hawaii because we have a tight call high cost of living to begin with. And now we're adding to our grief by having these huge premium increases of 300, 400, 500%. And it's a very hard thing when you didn't even know it was going to happen. Condos budget the prior year, so they're not ready for it in their budget. Everybody's off, their budgets are out of whack. So they're having to assess, they're having to borrow money. It's just a sad situation, but it happens all because the companies who insure the risk we spread it, and they spread it throughout all of America and the world. These are the same reinsurers who insure in Japan, England, New England, wherever the case may be. So we're all stuck with higher, higher rates. Got it. So for the reinsurers, I mean, so in terms of a path forward, because it sounds, you know, it's a really tough situation. And then there's so many, it seems like the list is growing more and more every day of, you know, underinsured condos. So kind of, well, actually, just kind of rolling back to that underinsured, what does that mean? Like, what does it mean when you say, you know, when when we hear from a lender or when we hear from the insurance agent that a condo's under underinsured? What does that actually mean? Okay, so condo statute and condo bylaws require the board to insure for a hundred percent replacement value, today's replacement cost, and. Obviously, it's when you insure for less, you're breaking your bylaws, you're not following condo statute, and you are underinsured. So if your building is supposed to be insured for $300 million, and the company who is insuring you only can offer you $15, $20, 25000000 million, and you go out to buy reinsurance on the other millions that you need, and when you multiply those millions by five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 per million, you're increasing your premium to three, four, five hundred percent, and I even had one go up to a thousand percent. And so they're underinsured because they're not; they don't have all the perils covered at the hundred million or the three hundred million they need. They have a hurricane peril, they may have wind and fire and all the other standard causes of loss, but not hurricane. And in our state, hurricane is required. Now, if we were in California, it would be the earthquake that would be the problem. But we're not. So we are not required to carry earthquake care, but we are required to carry hurricane insurance. And that's why we're underinsured or with a sublimit. Buildings at 300 million for fire, and yet at hurricane, it's only 25 million or 50 million or whatever they can get their hands on at an affordable price. So that's what they're trying to say when they're underinsured. Thanks, sir. So, Thanks for explaining that. Yeah. So what is, is there a resolution that it have to go through the legislatures or from the federal government or what, what would be the resolution or, or does time have to just pass? I mean, right. that's really impacting both the sellers and buyers and just everyone across the board. I don't think there's just one resolution. I think there's going to have to be several things that happen. Time, of course, is the greatest thing because we know from Iniki, Time heals all things, but it's not going to happen. And we can't wait 
two, three years for it to happen. So there is the legislature working. When Iniki hit, the state put in the Hawaii Hurricane Relief Fund. It's been dormant now for many years, but it's still there. And it's a vehicle that where if they could resurrect it and get it some money, they can literally buy maybe cheaper, condos could buy maybe cheaper insurance from the Hawaii Hurricane Relief Fund. There's, um, maybe there's federal help, I don't know, but everybody's trying to find a solution because it really does impact Hawaii. We're very much a real estate state. Our biggest assets are the real estate we own, you know, and it's the asset we're trying to pass on to the next generation. So our children, if they want, can stay in Hawaii because if we don't give them something to live in, they're never going to be able to afford anything at the rate we're going. So real estate is really the key to our economy here, if minus the tourists, of course, and not to be able to buy and sell, refinance, use your capital. And it's, it's very hard for all, many factors of our economy. So there's also a policy where if you don't have a 100% hurricane on your building, the unit owner can buy what's called a hurricane policy, separate mm -hmm. from his homeowner's policy. He can buy a hurricane policy that would put his unit back, even though the association might not have enough to put insides of the units back, but maybe just the windows and doors that blew out the common elements. So the master policy could take care of the building on the exterior. And then if each owner wanted to, they could buy a hurricane policy and they could say, okay, I'm protected. I bought this policy. I have enough here, maybe a $300,000 policy that's going to cover my interior as built. So the cabinets, the tubs, the toilets, the sinks, you know, the wall board, the paint, everything as built, and then I can use my own policy to put my unit back because there just might not be enough from the master policy. And that's kind of another solution or maybe that will help us get to the point where time has healed it all. But until then, it's very difficult. It's a hard situation to be in. And because it's a condo situation, if individual unit owners were to get their own policies to cover their own units, it would have to be everyone doing that in order for the entire building to be fully insured, in order for lenders to be able to give them loans at this point, right? I would think so. I would think the lenders will say, okay, well, I don't think any lender will say, okay, you have a policy. We'll give you a loan, but not Joe Blow next door because he doesn't have this policy. I would think they'd want everybody in the building to have it. And again, it's very hard to make everybody do something, you know, so. And I did try to talk to the company to see if they would like to write a hurricane policy, one policy with everybody's unit number on it, and we just give them one lump sum of money for it, and we make the association buy it, because maybe that would help. But no company wants the whole risk, you know, of the whole building. So it's it, it's a tough situation. So it's not going to work by itself. And so, you know, for those people who are maybe just looking for single-family homes or, or homeowners who are looking to sell, does this affect single-family homes? Not as badly because single-family homes still can get 100% of hurricane. The price has gone up. In other words, because Lahaina affected all companies, not just people who insure condos. It affected people who have single-family homes and have HO6s and ho 3 So the price of insurance has gone up even for a single-family home. But you can still get the coverage that you need relatively easy as compared to a condo looking for insurance of hundreds of millions of dollars when I just have maybe a million dollar home that I need to buy insurance on. So my premium goes up a thousand dollars or something of that sort. It's still affordable compared to the condo where it's now three, four, five hundred percent more. That's good to hear. And hopefully for single family homes, it will be a situation where time will heal the wounds, possibly, possibly yes. for the pricing aspect of it. I'm and sure it will. Something else happens. It's just, yeah, it's just like unique. It's going to take time Things are, and everybody says, oh, it's never going to go down. It will go down. It did go down in Iniki. There's no reason for it not to do it now again, but it's just going to be a time, you know, see how long it takes. Yeah. And, and so earlier you talked about the master policy. You also talked about HO6. Mm -hmm. So, you know, possibly for first time uh, condo buyers. So when they're looking at it, there's a, the association has their policy, right? That's called a master policy. Uh, the HO6 is their individual policy. Correct. So can you kind of, so in terms of who pays for what, do, do you mind just, you, you know, for anyone who's looking to buy a condo for the first time or second time as an investment property, can you just get into that a little bit so they have a full picture of what they might have to pay? 
Okay, so the master policy, the one the association buys, you pay for in your maintenance fees, it's already calculated in. The master policy, per the bylaws and condo statute, covers the building as originally built, okay, inside and out. So it comes with cabinets, tubs, toilets, sinks, walls, floors, ceiling, electrical, plumbing, if that's what your unit came with. If your unit came with just a shell, then all they do is insure the shell. But most condos came completely done up. So you're going to, master policy is going to cover that, even though it may have been built in the 70s or the 80s, but at today's replacement cost. So even though you may have cabinets that are 30 years old, we're not going to depreciate it. It's a replacement cost policy. We're going to give you enough money to put back your cabinets if they were ruined. Now, your personal policy takes care of upgrades because the bylaws say only as originally built. And as originally built might have been Formica and pressed wood cabinets and orange shag carpet. Okay, and it's been upgraded since then. You know, you put in a beautiful appliance, you put down a granite countertop, you, you know, you've uh, improved your bathrooms and your kitchens. Most people do that. And you've ripped out the ugly carpet and you've put down a beautiful wood floor. Now, those upgrades are not under the master policy. We'll still give you cabinet money. We'll still give you appliance money. We'll still give you carpet money. But it's not enough to put back what people have upgraded over the years. So the HO6 is a personal policy that each owner buys, whether you live in your unit or you rent it out, you mm -hmm. can buy an HO6. And it's designed for condo unit owners. It covers your upgrades of any owner. It covers your liability as a unit owner. It covers your rental income if you rent it out, or if you don't rent it out and you live in it, but you have a fire and you have to live elsewhere, it covers your loss of use because you still have to pay your maintenance fees. You still have to pay your mortgage, even if you can't live in your unit. So the HO6 gives you money to go rent something else, okay? Because you can't live in your unit. And of course, it covers the association's deductible. For example, you're cooking and you cause a fire in your kitchen. Let's say it's a $100,000 fire. Let's say we have a $25,000 deductible. We've now given the association $75,000 to put back your kitchen as originally built. But your kitchen was remodeled and you had a $15,000 refrigerator. And you had these expensive appliances, and we're not giving you that. We're giving you middle, middle grade, Sears style, best, those type of appliances, money for those type. And your policy, your HO6, is going to give you the money for your upgraded cabinets and your upgraded counters and every, your expensive appliances. It's going to cover your fact that you can't live in your unit for a couple of weeks while it's getting redone. It's going to cover maybe you had a tenant in there who set the place on fire. And your tenant now is out of whack and he's gone and he's not around. It's going to cover your loss of, your, of rental income. So these are the things that your policy covers, okay? So the mm. two of them work together. And I always tell everybody, if you insure correctly and you don't say, oh, I'm only going to need 10000 and yet there's a $25,000 deductible. If you insure correctly, the most any unit owner should ever be out on any claim is their own personal HO6 deductible. And those are usually five hundred or a thousand dollars. But if you don't insure correctly, you could be out thousands of dollars because everybody thinks the master policy is going to just take care of everything, and it can't. The bylaws are very strict, as originally built. So if you close enclose a lanai, that's not as originally built. That's yours. If you're in a townhouse and you put solar on your roof, and the townhouse burns, the solar is yours, not the association's. So these things have to be insured by the unit owner. And when you buy something, you have to know what you're buying and what's upgraded and what did not come with the unit. We didn't have air conditioning. We didn't have the solar. We didn't have this granite countertop. Those are the kinds of things realtors need to talk to each other about. So the unit owner knows what he who is buying knows what he has to insure. Okay. That is packed information, wow. <laughs> Oh, but awesome. it's so easily understandable. So that's why we love Sue so much. <laughs> I think being an elementary school teacher helps because you just want everybody to understand. Yeah. I always tell my accountant, why can't you talk to me like I'm a fifth grader? <laughs> so I understand it. I love it. So, you know, and I guess, so aside from the the looming and the current insurance issues, there's also the matter, and I heard you say before, that about 90% of all Hawaii condos or all Oahu condos, sorry, um, were built before 1990. 
And, you know, we're talking about this and I'm saying like my 30 year high school reunion is coming up. So that's not good because I graduated in the 90s and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Right. So we have aging condos, which is another issue. Right. Because they need to have a lot of work done to them and sprinklers. I know fire sprinklers are always on the minds of our buyers that are looking at condos. It's very much a problem, the older buildings. There's like 803 condos that were built, high rises that were built before 1990. And when you think of 300 of 803 of them, some have her sprinklers, but 300 of them do not. 302, I think, do not have sprinklers. So I know of three that are going to have it because they're working on it. So here's the problem. The pipes are old because they don't last forever. You know, so the interior pipes are old. And then, of course, you have the sprinkler issue. And our condos mm -hmm. have spalling which is typical. And there's a lot of maintenance involved in keeping up a condo exterior, never mind the interior. So when it comes time to replace your pipes for plumbing, which usually has to be done about 35 to 45 years of age, that's the best time at the, because you're going to bust down the walls anyway to put the sprinklers in because you're going to be making a mess anyway. And you might as well just bring it all up to snuff and have the pipes done, the sprinklers done, you're spalling down, the insurance companies will love you. Because don't forget that Florida condo that collapsed, the, the main reason it collapsed was because it didn't do its spalling repairs. So spalling and maintenance mm -hmm. upkeep is very important to insurance companies. In fact, I'm working today on a condo that I went back to the company and I said, can I get a reduction because they've done their spalling, they've done their, um, they did it, painted the building, they did their spalling, they just had their roof redone, they put in new pipes just a year and a half ago, and they're going to blow the sprinklers in two years. They gave them a $70,000 reduction because it's maintained. So I can't stress to you how important it is to maintain your buildings. And people who keep, we do reserve studies and say, hey, we're supposed to change the roofs at 25 years of age. Then we kick it down the road and it's 35 years of age and we still haven't done it. And then we're having roof claims. So the insurance companies want to know if they're going to insure your building that you're doing the best to upkeep it. And when you think about people who own single family homes, I mean, you can drive through a neighborhood and see who cares and who doesn't care about their house. I mean, some of them look, you say, does anybody live there? You know, the weeds are high. That's never been painted in 20 years. I mean, it's the same attitude. You know, you, you maintain and it's much easier to insure. And the insurance company feels that they're getting a better product to insure and less chance of having claims if it's maintained. So I constantly tell boards, put on your blinders. Don't worry about the cost. If it's something that has to be done, just do it because it will affect your insurance. And so, yeah, maintenance is a big, big issue with condos. And they're so old, some of them, and they've not been maintained. So the current owners are really suffering. Whereas if we had all along, of course, we didn't have reserve studies when condos first started. They're only about 20 years old now, maybe 25 years old reserve studies. So, but if we had started way back when, there would be more money in the kitty. But, you know, you still have to maintain, even if you don't have the money in the kitty. When it comes to, like, sprinklers, so, you know, there's a lot of buildings built in the 60s and 70s that have no sprinklers. Right. And there's no reserves. They probably can't afford to do sprinklers. So um, can you talk a little bit about the whole alternative to sprinklers? Okay, well, whether it's sprinklers or pipe replacement. You yeah. have to do it. And pipes are expensive. You know, you can spend four, five, six, seven million dollars redoing pipes in your building because you're actually having someone come in and bust down the walls, take out the old pipes, put in the new pipes. It's very expensive. And then, of course, they're going to go to your apartment and put the pipe goes into your apartment, replacing it as well. So it's really expensive. But I can't tell you how often I'll tell a board, you know, you're having too many water claims. You're going to lose the standard market. Now, there's only three carriers on our standard market here who have set rates. And if you lose the standard market, you go into what's called the surplus lines or what I call the secondary market. Okay. So when you can't put in, if you don't maintain your building and you lose all three carriers, you will go into the secondary market. And there is a Waikiki condo. I use it often and they know I use it as my example. They were paying $235,000 for their condo insurance property insurance. For years, we've been telling them, you've got to replace your pipes, you've got to replace the pipes. And we just kept on going to a different company that would take them on, raise the deductible, hope they wouldn't have too many claims. But finally, there was no standard market willing to write them. So they used to always tell me, we have no money to do pipes. So the very next year when this company canceled them, said we're non-renewing, 
their premium went from 235,000 to 1.2 million. That's a waste wow. of a million dollars that they didn't have to fix their pipes, you know, or to go get a loan with, or to help pay for the loan, the interest on it. So they're wasting a million dollars each year because until they can get their pipes redone to get back into the standard market. So maintenance again is so important because if you lose the standard market or if somebody says we're done, mm -hmm. we're not gonna insure you, you're not maintaining your building, then that's, if that's it. They're not going to be there to help you. I had a wood frame condo that called to say, Sue, our this outside stairwell fell off the building. I said, what? Somebody hit it with a car? What happened? Oh no, the termites were there. And we knew we had termites, but we just didn't have the money to fix it. And I said, that's not good. Said, oh, but what's not so good, Sue, is there was somebody on the stairwell when it fell. Okay, so now we have a real serious problem. Okay, because somebody got hurt. You knew the stairwells were bad. You had a report that said you needed to replace them. And you said you didn't have the money. Well, no company's going to want to insure that building. They had three months to get their act together, I told them, because the insurance company is going to want to see a structural engineer's report for every stairwell in the project. They're going to want to know which ones have to be replaced and that you've replaced them or you will have no insurance. So, I mean, instead of doing it over a long period of time and maintaining each year, replacing the ones that need to be replaced, all of a sudden they got to do them all. And you say you have no money to do it, but somehow when you're stuck against rock and a hard place, you find the money. So yeah. it means you had it, you could have done it sooner and done it right and over a longer period of time so it wasn't as painful. But that's why I keep on telling people, you have to maintain your complex. And it's really boils down to that. And if condos aren't maintaining, I mean, I think as realtors, I would say, well, okay, this one doesn't look like it's a maintained building. Let's find out what they've done. Have they upgraded? Have they not? Mm -hmm. And if they haven't, maybe I should be buying in this building. Maybe I need to go to somebody that's already assessed for the sprinklers. And I know what the assessment is, as opposed to somebody who hasn't. And I don't know whether it's going to be $7 million or $17 million by the time they get around. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree with you, Sue. Totally. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a tough place to be in. And I get a lot of calls that people will call and they'll say, realtors especially, have, there's an assessment here. What's that assessment for? I said, oh, they're doing their pipes. Oh, what, have they done their sprinklers? No, not yet. Okay. Or they, there's no assessment. Have they done their pipes already? And I can sometimes say, yes, they're all done. Most times they say, no, nope, they haven't done them yet. And it's a 45-year-old building. And you know it's going to come. So if you're selling to some young couple starting out in life and all of a sudden, you know, you're giving them, you're getting into a building that's 45 years of age and has done nothing, there's going to be assessments right. and can they afford it? So, you know, you got to kind of weigh who you're selling to and what you're selling as opposed to an investor who says, well, I don't care that it's an old building. I can, you know, I make my rent do it. I'm more interested in, in the appreciation once the old building gets its pipes and its sprinklers in, it will be worth more. You know, so there's that attitude too. So, oh, that was... Wow. Can you just say that you're amazing? No. Yeah. Yeah, you are the expert. And thank you so much. I mean, that, that, that's why, you know, all the other buildings should be working with you. But well, thank this, you this for was, that. Yeah, this was a lot of just jam packed essential information for condo buyers and sellers. Yeah. And condo owners. <laughs> and Generally, owners. yeah. And owners specifically. Right. So, yeah. No, thank you so much, Sue, for joining us on Inside Hawaii Real Estate. We appreciate you so much. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> I just want to thank, um, yeah, the CEO of um, Think Tech, Jay Fidel, CEO Caramon Lee, Michael Bailey, and the entire staff for having an amazing journey on, on this Think Tech journey. So, thank you so much. And thank you again, Sue. Well, thank we'll you. You're welcome. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content.
If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.